Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Celtic goalkeeper Craig Gordon signs a new deal until 2020. Bobby Madden will take charge of Sunday's Old Firm game. Peter Houston is the Championship Manager of the Month for February. Yeah, just a few of the talking points we will be discussing tonight. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, I'm delighted to say. Uh, Dundee's James McPaik is our bootroom guest this evening uh, to talk about his uh, rehabilitation and, of course, Dundee's performances this season. Um, so, lots to talk about. Um, first of all, Gordon finally puts pen to paper on a new deal, Ruffy. Yeah, thoroughly <coughs> deserved. Uh, I think he's been outstanding even since he came to Celtic. Uh, I think that's about the one and only mistake Brendan Rodgers has made was was taking him out of the team, and, and quickly, he was quickly enough to to identify that and change it round and get it right. But uh, I, I just think he's been outstanding. Even in European football, he, he's he's matured from day one and uh, much more. And, and he could go on and play for Scotland now for at least another three years. Yeah, and just picking up on that point, James, um, he deserves credit because. He was taken out of the side because Brendan Rodgers wasn't happy with his distribution from the back, something that goalkeepers have to work on now. Yeah, and I think when you watch him now, he's, he looks a lot more comfortable uh, with his feet. Uh, I think, as Ruffy says, he's a very good goalkeeper. He's a big presence and I think he's a big a big feature in that team and why they've done so well. He's composed and, and he gives his defenders some confidence with having such a good goalkeeper behind him, so no, it's, it's, it's great for him. Yeah, um, I'm a bit worried, Ruffy, um, when I was looking at some of the uh, morning papers uh, this morning, I decided to pick one in particular, uh, and I just think sometimes when Maka is away from us and not mm -hmm. in our company, um, I think he, he's maybe not yeah. the full shilling. Um, and that's my that's my yeah. honest assessment of it, as you'll see this headline, Maka's prediction uh, for for the old firm game is 8 nothing to Celtic. Now, the only thing missing uh, from that picture there um, for Maka is uh, a Celtic rattle, a scarf and the centenary mm -hmm. shirt. Well, as we know, he's a bit upset. He's not on pictures, not on the wall around the stadium. So, I mean, some, some players will resort to anything, you know, to, to get their photo up there. But, yeah. uh, you know, I think he's just uh, at it. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I call a classic at the wind-up on the week of an old firm game, James. Yeah, no, it's... I don't know. I think that Brendan will be... If he even sees it, he'll be happy with 1-0, never mind 8-0, as, as Mac is saying. So, no, I think you're right and you're spot on in everything you're saying. He's, he's just trying to wind everybody up that's reading it. Yeah, and I think there'll be a few more wind-ups, Ruffy. That's the great thing about the build-up to a Celtic Rangers game is uh, the amount of people that come out and say uh, various things. Anybody who's ever kicked a ball in an old firm game will be uh, rolled out there um, over the next couple of days just to mention their take mm -hmm. on it. I mean, Kevin Thompson, I think, mentioned also in the papers this morning, you know, strange things can happen in an old firm game. Even when you're on blistering forum, the opposition can come up with a performance that just, uh, you know, defies belief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's happened down through the, the years, even in the last game when, when Rangers scored early on, they had a chance to go 2 nothing up, but uh, never took their chance, you know. And if they'd went 2 nothing up, it might have been a different scoreline. But in the end, obviously, Celtic won quite comfortably. But no, I think anybody who's played in a derby game will go into whether it's Rangers, Celtic, Dundee, Dundee United, Hibs, Hibs. You go in there, you might be the team on forum, but anything can happen on the day. Yep. Um, Bobby Madden as the referee. Um, what have you made of him this season, James? I mean, I, I think referees have come in for some uh, criticism, unfair and over the top in my mind. Bobby, I think, has, uh, has progressed well. Yeah, no, to be honest, for Bobby, I think he's great. He's, he's one of the ones in this league, and there are not a lot of, a lot of these ones that you can speak to. Uh, you can you know, have a go at Bobby and he'll, he'll kind of have a go back at you. Obviously, you can't you can't go over the top, but you can give him your opinion and and he'll certainly tell you back without... You get some of them, no, no mention that as soon as you say anything, they're, they're warning you that you'll be booked or if you've already been booked, they'll be saying you'll begin off. So, no, I, th I think he's good. He's, he's got the right temperament to be to be on the pitch when, I think in particular, when things aren't going well. And that, that's, when, that's when he's a good referee. Yeah, I think that could be key to it. It's just mm -hmm. that calming influence. No need to react mm -hmm. early on, Robbie. I think that's what calms an old firm mm -hmm. game down. Yeah, but I've always said I think the players have got a lot of responsibility as well. We've saw a lot of tackles that have been 
uh, highlighted in the last two or three weeks there, you know, and I think I would like to think the players going into that game, all right, you get caught up in it, but I would like to think the, the players go into the game know that that kind of tackle was going to be dealt with, so we don't want anything rash, we just want to be talking about the football rather than the decisions. Yeah, we're going to talk about a tackle in just a, a minute or so because Kieran Tierney uh, was speaking to the media today in the build-up to that old firm game and with Celtic so far out in front, uh, a lot of people suggesting it's just an easy stroll but far from it according to the Celtic left-back. It's just about what you do in training and 100% and how prepared you are when you're going into the game. Yeah, the, the point gap's big but that's that's not came easy. Like, we've worked hard since day one for that. Um, every single day um, since pre-season and it's all geared towards the league and the Cups and that and we're obviously doing well but it's, it's not came easy for us. Yeah, um, it takes uh, a bit of battling qualities and of course, you know, from training to try and then put that on to the part, Rocky, I think a lot of people just looking and thinking, well, you've got the best players, you should be winning the league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they have got the, the majority of the best players, there's, there's no doubt about that in the league doesn't tell lies, they're so far ahead that it's unreal. But again, into that game, you, you would like to think the Rangers will have themselves motivated for the game. They'll want to go into it. They'll want to put up a good show. Uh, and until that first goal hits the back of the net, you know, the, until you get the confidence, whoever it is. We saw it at Ibrox when Rangers got the early goal, the whole place it, it erupted. So these are the th kind of things that turn these games. Yep. Um, Tierney also was talking about that tackle. Uh, from Ryan Bowman, uh, the model player, didn't get a red card. Uh, this is uh, what he had to say about it. Well, the thing, if, if you kind of look at the tackle, then look at the kind of aftermath on the knee, you're, it's, it's not a great tackle. Um, and obviously, the manager's just saying for the refs to kind of watch out. You know, a few challenges that probably could have been worse, but that's it's not my decision. Yep. Um, could have been a, a, a nasty one, James. I mean, and strangely enough, when I look at your injury, I don't think anybody was, was anybody near you at all. Yeah, it was a a bit of a freak collision with John Rankin. Um, probably now, if I could had the chance not to to go in it, I certainly would have hang back and, and not went in for a tackle. It's cost me fourteen months yeah. so far. So you know, it's I think Kieran's right, and I think everybody's had their say. It was a bad tackle. It should have been a red card, but it, it wasn't, and I think they'll be they'll be happy just to to hear the end of it as well. The, the, boy, the boy at Motherwell and Celtic, it's, it's been spoke about enough now. Yeah, um, we're going to talk about your predicament very shortly. Um, get uh, your take on when you're going to come back, James. That's uh, of paramount importance to us. Um, just before we hit the break, Ruffy, uh, again. Rangers, still no sign of the manager. Mm -hmm. looks as if he might not be in charge, mm -hmm. Pedro Cajina, for the yeah. uh, Old Firm game. Well, you're talking about things getting in the paper leading up to a, a big game. You know, that would be a big one for Rangers if he is the guy that's going to come in and if they get him a couple of days before the game, obviously the publicity will take, take over that. And I think the supporters would be happy with, with a new manager coming in. So that's the kind of thing that you could rely on to lift the team. But uh, it seems to be dragging its heels. Yeah, um, I noticed that uh, Gary Rowett has uh, come out, the former Birmingham manager, and mentioned the fact that uh, he's had a chat as well. Uh, I mean, there are three or four candidates who'll be hoping that Kajinha doesn't take it, um, James, and then they can maybe nick in and land one heck of a job. Yeah, no, I can see the reason why he would come out and say he wants it. Who wouldn't want want that job and, and get the chance to turn that football club around? So no, there'll be there'll be loads of people hoping that. That for whatever reason that falls through and, and they get a chance to go and take that job on. Yeah, and, and Kenny Dalglish has come out again in the last 24 hours. He mentioned the fact that uh, this director of football is a great idea. And I think it's not so much the fact that Scottish football doesn't embrace it, Ruffy. I think, you, you know, they're, they're well up for embracing it. There's not enough mm -hmm. finance to to yeah. look to every club to embrace a, a, a director of football. Yeah. Certainly Rangers should have enough cash to do it. Yeah, I think if you're at a massive club and you're, you're a football manager, you want to concentrate 100% day to day and, and, and on the Saturday. You don't want to be taking your eye off the ball, dealing with other things that somebody like that could deal with. And that's where I think Kenny, Kenny's obviously been at massive clubs and he can see the advantages of somebody like that coming in there. Yeah, well, I think that what he was highlighting is fact with John Barnes, he was able to take a bit of the heat off him for 
a certain amount of time. Uh, uh, and then, of course, Damien Camoli and the job he did at Liverpool for him. Yeah, uh, yeah I can imagine it. You know, I mean, you're a massive club. But I don't think people realise that what happens day to day behind the scenes. You know, the telephone must be running every 30 seconds. So if you can get somebody to deal with that, then all the better. Yep, absolutely. OK, coming up after the break, uh, we will uh, let you hear from Peter Houston. Uh, but going into the break, we thought we'd give you a little question to test your memory. question that uh, both our uh, team here got wrong because uh, James thought Ronaldinho, Ruffy, you thought Neymar on this one, but I can I can still remember that game. I was commentating on it. Uh, Kaka, I think he ran away from uh, Neil Lennon oh, yeah. and Steve McManus in extra time in the San Siro uh, and dispatched the ball into the back of the net. Do you remember it? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it was an excellent goal. Neymar would have been about 14. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> there you are. That's what I like about you, James. Uh, giving him a good dig for getting it wrong. Uh, okay, that's the quiz question. Let's look to um, Peter Houston. Uh, he's been named the Championship Manager of the Month for February, and Falkirk riding high at the top end of that table as ever, uh, making a late charge, which the Falkirk boss was keen to highlight. We finished second in this league and we flew under the radar of, of, of both Hibs and Rangers at times and a lot of people didn't think we were capable of sustaining it. I think we're getting stronger as the season goes on. I think recent results have proven that. So we have to keep it going. You know, there's still a quarter of the season still to go. We can't take in and rest in our laurels. Yeah, Peter Houston, uh, Falkirk side, unbeaten in four games in the month of February. Uh, James, two wins, two draws, but significantly, I think, he surprised most people with that 3-0 win over Dundee United. Yeah, and he's right. Every year they've been, they've been a right good team in that league, and whoever draws them in the playoffs, or when they make, if they make the playoffs, and, and no matter what team it is, they'll, they'll not be looking forward to playing them. Hibs found that out last year. They're a good team with, with plenty of experience in it. I know Alan Mabry who's here, James McDonough, and, and they can't speak highly enough of the players they've got and, and the squad they've had. And that's that's going back over the years and I think they've been they've been getting better as well for the addition, so that they're a, a dangerous team in that league. Yeah, Ruffy, if you have a look at that table, uh, I mean it's it's nip and tuck up the top end there, but I just I have got a feeling for Morton, um I, I, and are you are you swaying towards Falkirk in that playoff? Or? Yeah, but I think it might end up the way it is sitting just now. I think Peter Houston knows the advantages of finishing second. You know, he knows the, yeah, obviously with injuries and suspensions, you know, the least games they've got to play, the better. Uh, so he'll be hoping he can keep there. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's a team that I think will not be involved <coughs> in the uh, playoffs or relegation, and it's Dundee because you guys seem to be heading in the right direction again, James. Can you put your finger on why? Yeah, I think in the last maybe month or so, six weeks, we've, we've been a lot better. Um, obviously he's brought in Marcus Haber come in who's been a big help we can get the ball up to him Henry Koyama come in who who feeds off whatever Marcus does and, and they've really they've really took his on a bit we had a great win over Rangers and we went to Fur Park and absolutely battered Motherwell so there's a good couple of results then we played Partick Fissel in a game we probably didn't deserve to lose and, and they went above us and he's six in the table so our aim's still to finish in the top six it's, it's what we're our aim is at the start of the season, it's what, still what we're working on at the minute and we've, we've got a tough run in coming up, starting away at St Johnston on Saturday but it's a winnable game and it's, it's a game, games like that we need to win if we want to be in the top six come the end of the season. Yeah, and I would imagine the biggest blow is your defender Etcher McGuerin is out for six months, I mean he, he's actually fitted in well to that team, that's a huge blow. Yeah, he's, he's been great, I come back to what I said the, the last six weeks are month or whatever, him and Darna D have, have been really good and they've probably been the foundation to why we've been doing so well. They've been solid and it's a big blow for us. We've got cover there, yeah, but, but he was really doing well and it's, it's a sickener for him. He's a, he's a great boy, a great attitude and to be out for that length of time is going to be tough for him, but I'm sure he'll, 
he'll put the work in and come back even better. Yeah, psychologically at the moment, um, you know, day by day for you, you know what it's like to try and be sitting in the sidelines trying to work your way back. Where are you at the moment in your uh, rehabilitation? I'm, I'm still working, I'm still trying to get there. Yeah, I'm, I've been a bit naive at times, we're putting dates on it and saying I'll get back here or on this date and it's not worked and yeah, it's been tough mentally, it's probably the hardest part. It's every day you're you're walking about or I'm testing my knee, hoping the pain goes away. I was in London last week for, for an injection and I'll be back there this. I'm coming back there on Friday. The surgeon will he'll inject into me again and, and hopefully that can settle down. The, it's a slight problem, but it's been on too long now. I can't afford to have any problems. I need to, to get rid of it to try and give myself the best chance to get him back as, as good as I can. Yeah, um, I, I would imagine now because of that you're going to give yourself uh, the time. What's the club been like with you in this? Oh, the, the club have been have been different class. Everything, whether it's been the surgeon says we need to go down for an injection or a scan, an operation, whatever. The club have just says go and do what you need to do. Um, the back is for the start. Every, everybody round about there, nothing's been a problem, and it's a credit to them really because it doesn't happen all over, and, and they've been really good. Yeah, that's a good point, Ruffy. I mean, mm. refreshing that Dundee have given them their full backing as well. Yeah, I, I think, uh, for some me, I've never had a long injury, but I think when you hear the guys that do have long injuries, the, the biggest thing they talk about is the support that they get. Uh, because, James will tell you, there'll be low points when you think you're not getting anywhere and you, you need people to be around, you need people to keep saying, look, uh, it's not that far away. You know, you keep... Uh, having to build people up and uh, it must be a, to be out that long you know when you you, you know it's the career's not that long anyway you want to play as long as possible but uh, you know I'm sure it'll be back soon yeah fingers crossed on that um, we don't want you as a regular on our show just yet James um, you've mentioned St George you've got Celtic and Aberdeen after that as well um, I, 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 I'm not preempting anything that Paul Hartley won't be taking it for granted but I just think you've got enough in reserve though to not be involved, although that tops that bottom six is very very tight. Yeah, it is. It's it's too tight really. Um, any team can, a couple of wins can go into the position we're in or Partick Thistle. So yeah, the aim, I said there, the aim's the top six, but the first one is to to get away from the trouble at the bottom. Um, and our couple of wins and 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 that will that will take care of itself. But <coughs> last year we missed out in the last day of the season. We're getting into the top six first season up we made it so it's important for a football club I think that we, we give it a right good go and you mentioned day two games coming up but again it's game, you can't really Rangers came every day thought we'll, we'll not win that one and we won it so then they go up to Inverness and you think oh it's a great chance for us that they can they'll beat Inverness Inverness will not get any closer to us and Inverness end up beating them so every game in this league now is winnable no matter where it is or yeah Celtic are are still unbeaten, but I think someone's going to beat them at some point. So we look at every game and we fancy our chances of winning every game. Yeah. Um, you think somebody will beat Celtic at some point? Yeah. 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 They're not going to be invincible. No, I think they'll get beat. Okay. There you are. Ruffy, write that down, will you? <laughs> Mick Pake says Celtic are going to come across. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it now. Against us. Against Dundee. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing, yeah. Uh, we'll get Mac on to predict that one. Um, just on a, a game that is taking place tomorrow night, uh, I thought I'd get you guys' thoughts on it. Uh, I mean, we showed you the championship table there. Uh, we can show you it again at the bottom end, Ruffy. Uh, just a highlight in this championship table, how tight it's going to be between Wraith Rovers mm -hmm. and St Mirren. This is a huge game um, for John Hughes, um, but if St Mirren can get the mm -hmm. win, the cat is among the pigeons. Yeah, I'd, uh, just like our, our uh, relegation uh, table, I think theirs is the same. I think even Dunfermline, you know, although they got a good win at the weekend there, you know, they're only 30 points, you know, they could be drawn into it as well. So every game coming up is is really important and obviously tomorrow night is, is crucial. Yeah, on Saturday's show, um, Ruffy, after you'd obviously um, dismissed St Mirren out of hand, uh, you and Des and Kevin Harper, uh, Jack did send me a text to say, could you pass on my best wishes <laughs> to the guys <laughs> for predicting we were going to get thumped by Celtic. Um, are you predicting a win this time? Floor. St Mirren or Wraith Rovers? Uh, I'm going to go Wraith Rovers. OK, James? 
I'll go St Mirren. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go St Mirren as well. I'm in James's camp on this one. Um, okay. Um, Arsenal are not going to overturn four goals tonight, are they, Ruffy? No, I don't. I don't think so. But uh, European nights are always uh, big nights for Arsenal. Uh, they've got certain players in there who could turn it round, but they won't this time. Uh, and just <laughs> <laughs> I got that. I got that. Uh, okay. um, will Barcelona overturn their four goal hiding against PSG tomorrow? No, I don't think they'll do that either. Yeah. Um, PSG have got too much to, to let that happen. OK, um, listen, uh, I've got to say good luck to Glasgow City. They unveiled their new strip um, <clears throat> over the last uh, 24 hours. They're getting ready for the new season in the uh, ladies' football and the girls were there all resplendent. We'd love to see a bit of sponsorship and uh, a bit of backing for uh, the football teams and uh, certainly 10 in a row, would you believe, uh, Glasgow City getting ready to start the new season uh, once again. So best of luck to them and all the teams involved. Um, last word on this, we wish James McPeak um, a speedy recovery at the right time back playing in the dark blue of Dundee. Thanks to James for joining us on the programme. Barry Ferguson is our bootroom guest tomorrow night on the programme from Ruffy and myself. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>